Hello everybody and welcome back to MarkTech Masters. Today we have Josh Ho from Referral Rock. He is the CEO and founder. Thank you, Josh, for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me, Gabe. Awesome, awesome. So today's today we're gonna talk about word of mouth, referral. This is very exciting. This is something that not a lot of people have figured out, and I love to have you here to discuss some of these things. But before we begin, why don't you tell people a little bit about who, who you are uh, uh, so we can start with that. Sure thing. So um, as you mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Referral Rock. We're a referral marketing software as a service. I know your whole audience probably knows all about SaaS and MarTech mm -hmm. and the MarTech 5000 and, or 10,000 or whatever <laughs> thousand now. <laughs> so uh, we do have our little spot in there. So you can see us if you have to zoom all the way in kind of in the middle next to loyalty in that area. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I have a family, I'm, you know, two little kids. So if you hear them right now, one of them is doing Musa martial arts. So if you hear kind of semblance of he's and who's and whatever, that's probably him in the background. Um, and, uh, I actively play handball. I'm actually a, I won a national championship this past year that's and, awesome. um, and I stress eat late at night. So, um, that's, that's kind of me in yeah. a nutshell and a lot of it right now. Don't <laughs> so. we all lately, <laughs> yeah. right? So uh, tell us a little bit about Referral Rock, how it started, and, and what, what do you solve, and who do you solve it for? Sure. So um, first, a little more about me. I'm that, I'm that friend, that kind of connector that can't shut up and <laughs> tell you about an awesome product or service. So, uh, you know, it, and I found it really easy, you know, about five years ago or so with Ubers and Dropbox apps, and everyone had a Refer a Friend program. So everyone knows what those were from those you know, from the tech side. Um, but what I ended up realizing was like, who was doing it for everyone else, anyone else that was not tech or e-commerce. And I'm sure in the agency world, you know, not everyone is tech and e-commerce as much as that floods all of the conversations in Twitter and everywhere else. There are, there's a ton of companies that have nothing to do. It's not like sexy tech and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So uh, that's where our kind of original mission started is we wanted to help businesses run referral programs in any business, not just e-commerce. That was even like the tagline for our, uh, you know, title tags and SEO and all of that for a while. And, and it held, helped us cut through the noise because there was plenty of e-commerce referral programs out there and everyone knew how that worked. Um, and so, yeah, that's where we set out to build our own product and kind of stamp our, uh, our flag in that little area. Hopefully it, it was a bigger wedge than, than we were initially seeing. That's cool. That's cool. So um, let's talk a little bit about how companies are using referral uh, referral programs and referrals these days. You know, a lot of people think that you can't scale them. You know, there's that, that, the whole notion of, yeah, if you want to double down, you can't double down on referrals. And of course, there are ways you can make a better process in your systems. You can have a better um, user experience. There are ways to increase referrals, but there are more direct ways to do it, right? Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think, I think what we discovered through our sales process and through talking with lots of people, it was a great market to be in, right? Like people knew specifically what referrals were and then, and even on a larger scope word of mouth. Um, and then when, but when you got to it and you're like, okay, and the easiest way to explain it was, referral program or refer a friend like Uber and Dropbox. Mm -hmm. And that's when the polarized reaction started, right? You get the person that knows what they are, knows how it works. And, you know, uh, they came in as a customer ready to go. They knew what they wanted. And, and that was easy. It was just to kind of check the feature boxes. Are you the right product fit? That type of thing and go. And they knew how to do it. They knew the mechanics. They knew what they were doing. Um, and then you have this other camp that people are like, oh, referral programs. Yeah, it's not going to work for our business. And they kind of just immediately shut off. And it was good because it was, it was great. We had these ones that just shot through the pipeline, went through customer success, set all these things up, really saw the value we were adding by having things like a member portal versus just a widget mm -hmm. that just says share. So they can come back and, uh, or a mem someone that joins a referral program, program could come back. They can get notifications. They can see the activity and trust the system that it wasn't just a drop in the bucket uh, my friend went and signed up and you said I was going to get X and you never hear from them again, mm -hmm. which definitely happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so that, that other group, um, what I would, what we end up getting into more with them is that they're just so locked into that Uber one or that Dropbox type of thing. And they feel like 
refer a friend programs, they have to get a credit or a discount. It only works for B2C and that type of thing. So, and with any good marketing, right, you have to know your audience and aligning the, the, the program or the campaign and the incentives is, is really key. So like we had a lot of B2B ones that are a really good example because you might have a user, let's say um, it's a marketing product, mm -hmm. um, but that marketer using the product is uh, using the company's budget. So they don't care about a credit. Mm -hmm. They don't care about getting a bonus, you know, set of campaigns or a bonus like email credits or anything like that. Um, but what they care about, a Starbucks card. <laughs> you give that person, that, mem that, that uh, marketer, referring their friend to another marketing product, and they get a $50 Starbucks card, it's mm -hmm. like, hey, what, what's to lose with that? You know, I'm, I, can, I can crack into my budget there. Um, or a donation to their cause. You know, in this day and age, that's, it's causes, causes really help and, and pull on people's heartstrings and help people mm -hmm. get involved. Um, even a t-shirt might resonate. Um, you know, things like that, they're just a really good fan of, a fan of the brand and just getting a t-shirt or a little bit of swag. Hey, you know, a lot of people really, really enjoy that type of thing. I think that's great advice. I think that referral programs have in some, for some people, bad reputation, right? And, and, and it, it's because they're, we're not connecting probably the, the audience to the product, to whatever it is, the benefit. And I love that you're saying it doesn't, you need to think about your audience. Who are you trying to connect with and what is it? What it, what's in it for them to refer you to someone else, right? And uh, that happens, that could be applied to leaving a review or leaving a, you know, anything that has to do with word of mouth um, would, would apply to do. Any other advice on, on how to, you know, or examples on how to use referral programs to connect with things that most people wouldn't think about? Like you said, most people B2C, they think about it. Yeah, that's very easy to do. Uh, what happens on B2B, but... Any other industry examples or any other advice that you have? Um, yeah, I mean, again, with the kind of incentive structures, it really comes down to that. I mean, I mean, the classic examples are the, the two-way uh, referral program where I get something and you get something. So that always usually works pretty well because it's a social gifting thing. You don't have to feel like you're selling out to your 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 friend or whatever like oh all my friends that one's worth five bucks that one's <laughs> worth a free uber ride that one's worth like they don't no one wants to feel like that person so that's where the two-way thing like hey you get something and i get something so awesome. um but but you can also be more creative with that uh you know you can get more complex into tiers but not overly complex like a lot of companies get locked into what is this costing me right mm -hmm. um but the beauty of it it's it's performance-based marketing, right? It's not pay-per-click. It's not uh, impression-based. It's if a sale is made, now you have to give that thing. So you've, you've got to think more up-chain in terms of how much would I pay for that for that lead. And, and the other benefit is it actually just raises the profile with you with the existing customer too, because mm -hmm. now, you know, they've referred you, they see that you've, uh, you know, given them credit or reciprocity for it and whatnot. So there's different ways to do it. You can play with, we have a, a neat thing that's been taking off lately is especially with the people that can't necessarily give a lot for their referral program. Mm -hmm. They might do a tiered system where the very first referral that they get that the friend sends them, they're going to give them a, double size reward or something like that. So that gets them over the hump of like, am I going to really refer a friend for five bucks? There you go. But 10 bucks, 20 bucks kind of sets the light off. So mm -hmm. they're able to do something like that and then give five bucks for ones initially afterwards. But now they know the system's working. They have trust that, Hey, that friend signed up. Now they can kind of go ahead and, and, and keep, uh, keep rolling and share again. That's awesome. That's awesome. So of course the world has changed and we have, you know, um, a crisis that we're going through and a lot of businesses are trying to adapt to this. Um, what are some of the, 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 the word of mouth um, systems or referral programs that you have seen that could help in a time of crisis like this one? I love that you mentioned, you know, maybe, maybe a donation or something like that. Uh, any yeah. other examples or anything else that can help in a time of crisis? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's probably, you know, hopefully for us, it's shining a little bit more light on the whole um, just doing more with word of mouth. Uh, I think what has happened, and we saw this through, you know, as a as our SaaS business, you know, we saw a little bit of a dip, but since then we've kind of come through and passed that. But we actually, what was really interesting, you know, the, I think the first initial reaction in the first couple of weeks was cut all the budgets, right? Like mm -hmm. anything we think we don't need, and 
oftentimes the marketers or people at hand didn't necessarily have a choice to like just cut anything that doesn't need to be to mm -hmm. be there. So um, we saw that and we did something. We allowed people to do pause plans, keep your stuff, like don't worry about it. Just And what was interesting is when that second tier of like, okay, now that the dust is settling, what do we do now? A lot of people came back and turned on their programs. And I think they just started to analyze it and look at how that word of mouth was only was only going to help them and to buckle down just like as we did and started to look, you know, we're not focusing on growth anymore. We're focusing on who's in our family, who's in our circle, who can we keep, you know, keep, keep safe on a family level, but who can, you know, your, your customers are kind of your inner circle. Mm -hmm. And I think our customers were seeing it that way too. So we started to see them paying more attention to their customers. And then it was a natural progression to where like, okay, well, we want to help you how can we help you? And there, they started changing campaigns around to say like, okay, you know what, we're doing okay, but you can help other people. You can refer friends and different things like that in a, in a way that wasn't too scheming because I think it was, you know, helping, helping other people as well. Of course, of course, of course. So um, how does Referral Rock help with this process? Because there are different ways to do referral programs. You mentioned having a profile. Tell us more about that and how the actual app helps us or, or can help a company um, run these programs without having to worry so much about what and how and, and how to communicate these things too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that kind of starts back to the impetus of the initial idea was since we weren't starting tech first, mm -hmm. we weren't, you know, we do have an API, but we weren't like, Hey, put in the script, do all these API things and all these app things. Um, it started with the thesis of if I'm going to sell to a, uh, you know, driving range or a uh, car dealership or a yoga studio, um, some of them don't even have websites. I mean, uh, and, and so how can we make it so they can run a program fully standalone? So it started with that seed of an idea. It's like they can go in the app, they can build their program, and we'll host it all. It'll be on a subdomain. You don't need to install a widget. You don't need to do all of that. So we kind of kept rolling on that path and it led us to building like landing pages. And so you can build a landing page in the app. And, and the whole idea is that the marketer wants to go in. They don't need to talk to tech. They don't need to get, get other approvals and whatnot. And they could go in and, and sign up and build their program, even in the free trial so they can see it all and have it live and play with some test people. Um, walk through the whole experience themselves as a member joining the program and do the sharing and kind of just just check all the boxes and see the full member experience because we really pride ourselves on making sure that member experience is is paramount um, but giving the marketer the tools to make it on brand look good have have their their own messaging um, but they can so they can kind of configure that and then what happens after that is they let their sales team go like they're 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 setting up the program it's running and the rest of the business operations just happens the same way it did before. So again, since we were, weren't necessarily selling to e-commerce, we, we got a lot of strong integrations um, early on requests for things like HubSpot CRM, mm -hmm. uh, Salesforce, um, Marketo, all of these other things. It's like all of the other systems of record in the marketing world. And they're like, how can we just, we don't, we don't want our salespeople to go in and say, yes, this referral came in the door exactly. and this sold these things, right? So um, that's where the integration with HubSpot um, made, a, made a huge thing. It just kind of the stars start to align as you build these things. And you're like, huh, I'm going in this area. Oh, these are also in this area. How can we you know, work together? It was, a, it was a natural progression that we didn't want salespeople in the product. We, were, we wanted them doing everything exactly the way they were. And the marketer can set up all the events, connecting to deals, connecting to close one and say, oh, close one, that triggers the reward and boom, gift card gets sent to person. So yeah, um, so that's a great segue because I was going to ask you how, you know, why would you integrate with a CRM or, or, or a, a tool like HubSpot and, and um, it, the, the, you, you, we were talking the other day about this and the answer is, so salespeople don't worry about the program and they don't have to do anything about it and they can just do their job and once the sale is done it's passed on to the referral program and it's marked as a sale and then again salespeople and marketers don't have to worry about when and how these things happen the tool takes care of it with the integration right right exactly that's awesome that's awesome yeah you hear in SaaS, everyone talks about like active users and people it's like no nah, i don't want active users they want to go in set up their thing 
and let it run in the background. Let every new customer X factor of how many percentages do a referral and it just happens, it coordinates with everything else they're doing. And they might come in and refresh their program, launch a new campaign quarterly or make some little minor changes. But you know, if we can sit there at the bottom, you know, rate, give, giving an extra 10% boost across the board as you keep going, like, and, and it works for everyone. So. Well, at the, at the end of the day, uh, I like what you mentioned is it, it's not an expense that hopefully will bring you something. You, you need, you need to invest something in it. There's an investment in initial setup and investment yes. in the tool and everything. Exactly. But then after that, if you get sales, then you would have to invest in these things. So it actually makes sense to implement it no matter what, or try it no matter what, because at the end of the day, it might just become another source of potential leads and customers for the future. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, any other advice or, or things to prioritize these days? I know things are changing and people are adapting. Any other things that are, you're seeing with your customers that they're doing to try to make these happen? Yeah, I think the, um, one of the things we were starting to study and it just did focus us more on our customers and looking at who were the most successful ones. And as much as I'd love to say, just insert our tool and magic happens, but <laughs> we know the reality of it is like, it all comes from the core of what that company is. And so we've been, we've been working with customers and studying their word of mouth, like just organic word of mouth. And I know we've talked about word of mouth a lot, but when you have a baseline kind of referral program, it essentially just amplifies whatever else is going on. If only 1% or half a percent of your customers are referring, like you got to fix that first, right? Those, we're not going to be able to fix your customer service. We're not going to be able to fix your brand. We're not going to be able to fix your value proposition, all of those things. And I've kind of, I've, I've been meaning to write a blog post about this, but like I, I say like customer service, the product, um, which if your service business is also service, um, but, and, and brand and value, if, if you're like really, you know, 10 out of 10 on any one of those, you're going to get some word of mouth. If you get two of them, oh my gosh, if you get three, you're like world-class, like all of these things. And then adding the layer on of things like referral programs, just help that flywheel spin, you know, and, and, and the, all the stuff we're doing, you know, really, you got to have that base. So, Anyone that's talking is just like focus on that, focus in on your customers, focus on the value providing, your brand, the product, and any service you can do. I think service nowadays is just a huge way to differentiate. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I, you're almost shocked sometimes when you get bad service and you, you can probably see it in like smaller localized things where there's less choice. Yeah. But it's it's kind of a shame that 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 can that can still go on these days yeah and 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 it's so key that that you fix those things before you even think about any referral program or yeah. word of mouth um first of all measuring understanding what you're getting from word of mouth today uh and also understanding your customer service and and your user experience and measuring and tracking those things so you can understand where the potential problems are that you can fix internally so yeah there are ways to get more referrals and number one is fixing your processes and systems and internal things. So when you are product, you, you sell a product or you're 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 doing a service, uh, every time the experience is as good as possible. And even when things go wrong, the experience should be great. And those things need to be fixed before you send more people to be referred to the system. So so that would be kind of like step one understanding where you are fixing your your user experience and your your customer service issues and then and then definitely go back and try to amplify those things right right what that's the problem. flywheel right that's the flywheel everyone yeah. keeps talking about and uh and and that's the thing we keep we we try to push back on customers too because sometimes they're startups sometimes they're feeling like oh that is the formula that got Dropbox off the ground. It's like, no, they no. got leads. They had people first and they had a good product. Like you, you got to have those things. And um, we're not, it's not going to be a holy grail, but we can help that flywheel spin. We can help it, you know, give it some other, give it some other spins to, to pick up the speed. Of course, of course. Anything else you want to, you want to share, uh, Josh? Uh, I know we've talked about a lot of things, but we always give at the end, sometimes this, this could be anything you want to share. It could be special. It could be more products, you know, stuff related to your product or a message to the world. This is your time, Josh. Uh, I mean, lately what's on my mind is, uh, you know, from a startup perspective, I'm, you know, we're about 14 people. Um, we're trying to, 
I'm still in a lot of day-to-day uh, -day things. Uh, I, I'm sure I will be wed to product for quite some time, which I love to do. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, just probably the recent features we're building just because we keep, we, we do keep our ear to the customers a lot. And mm -hmm. one of the things we've been hearing in the past year or so is just they would launch their programs and then sometimes that marketer got, got all their, you know, got, got their program launched and they don't have time to circle back and they forget to, you know, add it to their email signatures. They forget to kind of bake it into the rest of their marketing. So you had this big launch and I'm sure you've had this with, with, with you guys marketing. You do yeah. this big launch and then you kind of stop and it's like, well, you gotta have something else. You gotta keep going. Um, so we're on the, we're in the early days of, we have a, a, a new feature called uh, like, we call it auto ask. So um, it's a way to just take more of these signals. So the fact that we're hooked up into HubSpot CRM is like, um, now what event would you want for it to happen to invite someone to a referral program? Mm -hmm. So, and we want to get into, you know, some of the review platforms and things like that. But the baseline is there, there's an API, it hooks up to Zapier. And, and I think I'm really excited about that one so um, um we have a lot of early customers using it it's it's out of beta it's out there um and we have a a couple sources hooked up to it and things like that um and the other thing is uh we have the new dashboard coming out and which we're really trying to move the narrative around away from just referrals as the value prop um and more towards the brand awareness as well because you might have a buyer um, that, you know, Hey, are you ready to buy a car? Probably not today. <laughs> but yeah. if, uh, if I, if you can be top of mind at a certain car dealership down in Florida that I happen to hang out at and I'm telling you about it, it, when you are, that's going to bubble up. But, but the fact that you're visiting the site and kind of checking out what they do, what makes them different, um, you know, that that's still worth something. So even if a referral Definitely. doesn't come in, um, we're doing a lot more with our dashboards to kind of show, the traffic, the repeat traffic, so we can even quantify more than just the referrals. That's actually very smart. I believe that there is value in time spent with the brand. Uh, we do a lot of brand affinity um, and, and awareness and affinity. They, they work together very well. So I would love to be able to see not just the sales, but also, hey, is this bringing more traffic? Is this bringing people that are watching videos and spending right. time with right. a brand? So that's very smart to, to expand on those things uh, and also reviews because local businesses uh, live through those reviews and not just local business. Every business lives on uh, on reviews. So all those are, are great. You also mentioned some automation. Maybe we can automate that when these things happen, then we trigger an invitation. Oh, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's all built in. And right now we even do it as a way where you can hook up a source mm -hmm. and it will collect them mm -hmm. and you can see what it collects and then you can choose to send a campaign out of it. And then later on, if you decide to say, now I want to make a automatic rule based off of that, then you can do that. We understand people are a little kind of, they want to take a step back on automations. It's just not like, well, I'm, I know that's going to do, but I don't want to just push that button. Let me see. <laughs> so, so we built that as a, a nice way so you can see all the collection and that's then great. you can decide like, hey, here's these 20 email addresses that came in. Here's why. Here's the source. They gave a positive review. And then you can also segment them, say, oh, I'm going to change the messaging a little to them a little differently, or I'm going to route them to this different referral program, which has a different offering. So it awesome. allows you to kind of A-B it a little bit. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again, Josh, for everything that, that you've shared with us today. We're going to definitely encourage people to check uh, Referral Rock and uh, give it a try. You said you, you had a, a free trial, right? Yep. Yep. We have a free trial and we're, awesome. uh, yeah, we're, it's a 14 day free trial, it. but I'm going to link it right here. Okay. Perfect. Right there. Right there. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Josh, thanks for everything. We'll stay in touch and stay safe. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Have Take a good care. one. Thank you for, thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.